It looks like we've found our first little um, sheep habitat. Yay! So, <laughs> um, glad we turned. Exactly. <laughs> great um, decision on uh, the part of um, all of the scientists and stakeholders we're working with. But so right here we can see this there are Bathymodiolus mussels. It will be one of three species, Hecari, Brooksi, or um, Childressi. Um, you can also see some more of those chiroted uh, sea cucumbers within those mussel beds. Should and I'm sure once we zoom in, we'll get a good look at some of the yeah, other macrofauna inhabiting these beds. These Bathymodiolus mussels tend to be um, foundation species in that they create habitat for other animals in these areas. Any place you want to zoom particularly, Roland? Uh, let's start with those two yeah, purple. They do, it does look like we have some tube worms the associated with them. Yes. And, uh, go to the, the good thing is that left. they're alive. Okay, go ahead. They look, they look like they're alive, which means there is active seepage going on here. Otherwise, they wouldn't be alive. <laughs> okay, so we've... We've definitely Lasers got um, some more of this Chirodota chir um, sea cucumbers, some live tube worms, um, anemones, shrimp. You can Thank just you see the antennae sticking out. They're probably Alvinacaris, either um, Muricola or. Yeah, that's fine. I'll yeah, have to look at the other species. Perfect, um, uh, then we've yeah, also you, got, interestingly, brittle stars. And so what tends right, to happen in Gulf of Mexico seeps is you tend to get different communities uh, depending on like whether it's like um, above a thousand meters up, depth, shallower than a thousand okay. meters depth, or deeper uh, than a thousand meters uh, depth. Just, um, and so this, up, the sites which are deeper than a thousand, um, you do tend to get, instead of various gastropods or various snail species, you tend to get ophiroids moving in to fill that niche, interestingly. Continue to drift left Copy. to the big batch. This is my Ooh. first... Um, view of a habitat like this. Oh, great. I've seen the uh, other worm um, worm forests associated with cold seeps in, in on my one trip in the Gulf of Mexico further west, but I've never seen this combination of mussels and worms, I don't think, and certainly with the anemones, brittle stars, sea cucumber. I've never seen that sea cucumber before. That's very cool. So the brittle stars may be Ophi or the enigma splenilobatum, splenilobatum. How yeah. appropriate. Um, these tube worms are either going to be lamellibrachia or scarpia. Judging by how wiggly they are, I'm tempted to go with scarpia in this particular area, but I could definitely be wrong. But as you can see, this is a perfect example of how these habitats are these oases of life. You know, just a very, very small area has this huge aggregation of animals, you know, probably over a thousand animals just here in this little space. Um, most of them in this environment because of these uh, fluids seeping out of the sea floor, which provide the energy source for the bacteria, the primary producers the at these sites. And that looks like in that uh, next to the dead mussel, the live sediment covered one, those look like little zoanthid anemones. There's another cluster there, possibly. Yeah, when you look closely, there really are lots of little tiny things in between. And not only do the mussels and the tube worms create habitat for other animals, wow, look at the amount of brittle stars in there. Um, but they also alter the ecosystem. So it's something that the term ecosystem engineers, 